Hi there. Uh, welcome to the Connecticut LGBTQ Film Festival. And I'm really happy to be joined today by the co-directors of Keeping Keep the Cameras Rolling, the Pedro Zamora Way. Um, so I'm joined by Stacey Wolfel and Bill Horner, uh, both from the University of Missouri. And I just want to thank you both for you know making this film. And we're honored to be the Northeast US premiere of the film. So so thank you for for making it. Yeah, I'm very happy to be part of your festival. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to you both. Um, so it seems that, um, you know, it seems that neither of you have done extensive film work before. So I was wondering if you can like tell us how at the University of Missouri did this, did this story come to be and how, how this project came to be? Yeah, I, I usually let Bill start that off. I, you know, I, my career has been in journalism, so telling stories in a lot of different ways, but this is the first uh, feature documentary I've undertaken, and, and Bill got the, whole, the ball rolling, so I'll let him talk about that. Sure. So um, so the, the story of Pedro is one that, so I am a person of a certain age, uh, which means that I was in my early 20s. Uh, when this episode, when this season aired back in 1993, and uh, I happened to have been in graduate school at the time, and 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 um, was working on a project um, about World AIDS Day, and uh, so I watched the season uh, with great interest, and and always thought that there was, I, I thought as I was watching it, the Pedro was having a profound impact on public opinion. And um, so it was something that I that I, I always wanted to get back to. And, um, uh, you know, w when you discuss Pedro with students of this era, they have no idea who he is. But as soon as they learn who he is, they become really um, very, very interested and very uh, inspired by his story. And so that was kind of how things got going um, uh, to to, that's one part of the story, and I think Stacy maybe can fill in uh, sort of things from his end. Uh, he's he's very modest in saying that he, he worked as a journalist, uh, uh, but for the last several years of his career, he was the director of a a documentary journalism program here at the University of Missouri. So, yeah, well, the the students that Bill recruited, who were political science students, and most of them also were journalism students. Uh, gave us a great start, and then we enlisted some of our documentary students to to work to help construct the film. So and and to be involved both in the production and post production phases. So uh, we would put teams together, and uh, you know, typically a trip to San Francisco or L.A. or New York was uh, you know one or both of us and five or six students uh, who went along, and so they were handling camera duties, doing the interviews, and so on. So, you know, our whole goal of this was not only to produce a, a feature documentary people would want to watch, but to give this experience to these students. And, I, you know, I think that second half, was, we were wildly successful with that because the students had a great experience making this film. That's great that you brought the story to a new generation because I know that myself uh, and many others on, the, on our festival committee watch this and it really it really touched us greatly because for a lot of us it was you know our era when we were watching it i mean i'm i'm three years older than pedro so mm -hmm. um so i was definitely tuned in when it when it first came on um so i'm kind of wondering you know certainly the show was groundbreaking at the time um but you know can you talk a little bit about why it's important to tell to tell this story now after 25 years. Sure, I'll start and then Stacy can jump in. Uh, you know, I think it's an important story to tell because uh, we are living in, in uh, difficult times and times in which we've seen a lot of progress and a lot of change and, and we're seeing a lot of pushback to that progress and change. And um, so I think that I think that Pedro's story is one which is um, kind of timeless. Uh, but needs to be told and retold. And um, I think the other thing is that in particular, Pedro is a, just a, an amazing example of the power of, of one person, really, to take on an enormous burden uh, and, and, and make change and be an agent of change. And, um, and I think that's something else we need to be reminded of and see examples of in this 
era in which we're living. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that that um, Pedro is one of these characters that you can see in a film, see in a documentary, who really is perfect for this um, method of communication, this medium. And so to be able to um, take advantage of that, there, there hasn't been a lot done in the past on uh, Pedro. There was a uh, TV movie uh, that was made, uh, dramatization of his life, uh, what, 15 years ago, I guess, Bill, something like that, close to 20. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a character who was too good to to not get this treatment. And so we're just happy to be able to put him out there for the public to get to know or know more about. Yeah. And Bill, you were, you were referring to kind of, you know, the politics of today as well. And then one thing I wanted to ask about was, do you guys kind of see parallels today with the with the trans community as a punching bag for you know politicians, um, and do you draw parallels with that and the and the early '90s with the gay community being you know scapegoated for the AIDS crisis? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know one of the things for our uh, students and for younger people who watch this who sort of feel like everything that exists now, you know, has been that way for a long time. And they don't realize that this wasn't that long ago, you know, a generation ago. So there were some drastic changes. And as you watch the film, you know, there's discussion in there about uh, Pedro and Sean kissing on camera. So two men in a loving relationship who get to go through a, a wedding ceremony on the show and uh, no controversy for the makers of the program to show that, no controversy for MTV to run it while CBS was struggling with a fictional depiction of that in Melrose Place, the, the soap opera at the time, uh, CBS or Fox. I can't remember what that's on Fox, I think it Fox. actually was. Um, and um, you know, anybody, young people now watching that are like, that, that's ridiculous. And they don't realize how easily things can change. So um, we're seeing now with the direction the Supreme Court's going, you know, perhaps marriage equality is in, in jeopardy now uh, as it starts to, to move its footprint wider and wider. And so it reminds people that things can change quickly, but they can change back quickly too, I think. Yeah. Um, so changing, changing things up a little bit, um, you got some incredible um, interviews from incredible uh, people, certainly, you know, the, the original, many of the original cast members, um, but also Dr. Fauci and you got President Clinton. Um, so I'm kind of curious about that. Uh, can you talk about any difficulties that you had in, in landing those interviews? And then if, and if, if there weren't any difficulties in landing them, can you talk about someone who you might have wanted to be in the film but weren't able to get yeah you know bill's i'm the journalist of the pair but bill's the one who landed all the big interviews so i'll let him talk about that but they they, they were a lot of work he and this and the students worked hard at this so uh so i'll talk quickly about the two who you name checked uh fauci was uh actually quite easy uh because we we approached uh, uh so one of the things, so we, so the students worked in 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 groups, right? They were teams, and 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 uh, so there was a team that did research on on the history of the AIDS pandemic, uh, and of course, Dr. Fauci was a key player in um, in AIDS research uh, from the very early '80s on, right? He's been in the same job for forty plus years, and um, <clears throat> so we approached uh, him. Uh, in in uh, 2019, uh, so uh, which is a key <laughs> a key date, right? <laughs> the time on his hands then. Yeah, and so he was not a household uh, name at the time. <laughs> yeah, and so you know I knew who Fauci was, but before the students started working on this, they didn't had never heard of him before, and so um, so it was actually pretty easy to set that interview up, and uh, and he gave us a, an enormous amount of time. All of these people say they'll give you 15 minutes, and all, everyone we talked to ended up giving us an hour, two hours, you know, um, just just lots of time. So we got to Fauci's office, and, and he wasn't quite there yet, and his assistant let us in, and we just sort of wandered around his office, which he's been in literally for 40 years. It's the same <laughs> office. And it is like a messy museum uh, in terms of all the stuff he's got on the walls and all of his honorary doctorate hoods and stuff that he's got. And 
Um, so we, we got to wander around his office for about 20 minutes before he even got there. And then he gave us about an hour of time. Um, Clinton, on the other hand, was um, a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, it took a long time. It took a long time just to figure out how to get to the right person. Um, and, and so that took some work. We've got some great connections because of the University of Missouri School of Journalism. And so we have some alums uh, who, you know, who work at a high level and they helped us make some connections. Um, but even after we got those connections, it took us um, a long time just to get, you know, we got a yes. And then it was weeks and weeks and weeks till we got a date on the, on the books. And then we showed up for the interview to, you know, in New York to do the interview and got a call the day before that said, oh, we're going to have to reschedule. And I had, you know, eight students with me and I said, no, we can't reschedule. We, we don't have any budget as it is. And this is it. We're coming over. <laughs> and, and they said, let me, and, 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 you know, let me call you back. And so I got a call back in about 20 minutes. They said, okay, you can come over. And so, um, so that, so we finally got that. So that was a very nerve wracking 20 minutes of my life. Um, but, um, but we got it. And like everybody else, we were told we were going to have about 15, 20 minutes with him. And we were there. <laughs> we, we were talked to him on camera for over an hour ish. And, uh, and then we spent another hour with him taking us around his office and showing him all the things in his, and showing us all the things in his office. So oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. As so, far as uh, who we didn't get, we did try to get George W. Bush, who um, not only was, you know, president, uh, was president, but also um, had a record on AIDS that uh, we thought would be uh, interesting to talk about. And um, Bill made a lot of inquiries there and they just sort of fell flat, I think. Yeah, we really wanted to talk to him about PEPFAR, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, uh and and they i think just didn't see the connection to the pedro story and um whereas clinton of course you know it was a, a fairly big part of his legacy and administration so yep definitely um so switching gears a little bit again um you know some of us on the committee who had watched the original show um okay. some of the committee members and i were thinking to ourselves you know when i i remember when we first watch the MTV show one of the one of the key parts of the the conflicts in the show was the big you know the conflict between Pedro and Puck yep right and so I'm saying to myself it, it had to be a choice that you guys made not to not to really cover that in the documentary um, so can you talk a little bit about about that what drove that choice Sure. So this was a collaborative effort, right? And in part, once the students learned about Puck, um, the students felt very strongly about not having Puck be part of the story. And, um, and Puck is not, right? So that conflict is there. And Puck is certainly an example of the kind of, of just outright you know, prejudice and, 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 um, just meanness, right. Uh, that, 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 that was prevalent then and is unfortunately prevalent today. Um, but it distracted from the story that we wanted to tell, which was about the, the sort of genius of Pedro and understanding, you know, how to use media to get a message out there and, uh, and the impact that he had. And, um, you know, we, we, we talked to um, all of the cast members about that relationship, and we talked to Pedro's sister about that relationship. And, um, you know, they're all still, they're pretty hot about it to this day. Yeah. And, um, and, and um, you know, so introducing that would have really changed the, changed the whole dynamic of the movie. And it would have been more about that than it would have been about pedro i think at the end of the day had we had we chosen to engage in that i don't know Stacey, yeah. do you have anything else you want well, to add yeah that, that conflict while i won't call it phony is a little bit more of those constructed reality show conflicts that we have come to see you know pretty common now the more interesting conflict was rachel of course because she came both as uh latino people but came with a really different political take on it and we thought that conflict of Rachel and how she 
both came around and didn't come around about Pedro in a lot of ways was much more interesting and much more authentic. Yeah. See, I think the Pedro or the Rachel story was crucial, right? I mean, it was critical yeah. to, to making, to understanding, you know, the kind of impact that Pedro had. Whereas Puck, you know, <laughs> he's just a jerk. No. <laughs> yeah, he was. He would have been a jerk to somebody on the show. If Pedro wasn't on it, he would have been a jerk to somebody else. So it, it's not the unique relationship that Rachel and Pedro had. Well, it really goes to show the impact that he had on so many lives, uh, including the people he was on the show with. It seems that uh, many of the people who he was on the show with went into careers, either researching AIDS or being spokesperson people to talk about the AIDS crisis. And so um, was, was any of that surprising to you guys? I think, uh, you know, just a, a little bit when you think the time they spent together was relatively short, you know, the time in the house was just a couple of months. And then uh, obviously Pedro was, was sick after that and they spent time with him then. But um, I think it's it's a little unexpected for anybody watching the film to see how devoted they've spent the rest of their lives sort of keeping Pedro's message and, and mission alive. Yeah. Um, you had some really great um, footage. I would say with the caveat that it was, some of it was grainy, <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of footage of him and his family and, um, you know, footage prior to him being on the show what, did you get all of that footage from his sister or where did it, where all talk about some of the, some of the footage that you got from the different, from MTV itself and, and other sure stuff. most, yeah, most of the footage came from uh, the real world um, broadcasts uh, and was pulled from that. Uh, Millie, his sister keeps his scrapbook, which you see featured in the film. He's talking about his scrapbook when he meets everybody. And so she has kept that scrapbook up to date. So some of the um, still images in particular and such came from the scrapbook and what she keeps with that. Okay. Um, so I'm interested in, you know, more about your, your, your work at the university there. Is there another story coming along that, that uh, you're, you're working on now or, that we should expect to see soon? We are. So, well, we, we, we are. Figuring out exactly what that story is going to be has been the project. Uh, we're working, you know, I, we're, I'm working with a new group of students. Uh, that's the problem with the students, right? They, they, <laughs> want, they graduate they and around. leave. And uh, so working with a new group of students and we, we spent uh, the spring sort of uh, pursuing three big three topics and 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 mostly trying to figure out which one was going to go and which one we could get people that would be willing to talk to us about and um so so you know that'll be the uh, and we're going to continue that in the fall that's the other problem with students is they all disappear over the summer so it's hard you know <laughs> things kind of come to a stop <laughs> in uh in the summer and so um so we're, we're, we're working, uh, we're working on, on a few ideas at the moment. Okay. It, it is the, the, this film took, we started it in, uh, late fall of 2018 and then completed it last year. And so we need to be faster Now we had COVID in the middle of that and some other things. And so we need to be a little bit faster so we can get this done while, while students are still enrolled. And so that's part of what we're working on now. Yeah. And were there any, um, you know, COVID specific things that, you know, were, were difficult for you working yeah. during the COVID time. <laughs> yeah. The production I, phase was over by that point. So it was editing. almost, almost. Yeah. Over. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You notice the, the one interview with Mohammed is right. on, uh, is on zoom. Um, All right. Yeah. And uh, so, so that he was our last interview. Yeah. And that was literally done that day. We, uh, there was a camera person on her way to his apartment. And then he, and, but this was in March of 2020 and he had cold feet and said, you know what? I don't think I want somebody coming from outside. And so we, uh, we did it on zoom instead, but uh, no, it was, you know, all the problems people have, you know, people were locked in their houses and the editing equipment was someplace else. And we were trying to move equipment back and forth and, and get things done. So not insurmountable, obviously it just slowed things down. Understood. 
Well, I want to thank you both for spending some time with us and, and you know, corralling all the students. And it, <laughs> it seems that you, you put together an incredible, incredible story. And it's a timely story, like you said, timeless and timely. So thank you both for being with us. And uh, I wish you all the best with your next projects. Thanks well, very much for, uh, thank you for, for having us. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Mm.